Happy Monday guys, this is Bernie with CG Spectrum. I had to change uh, the regular time, streaming time, to later in the afternoon, at least here in California. I just started a new job uh, today, actually. And there were some meeting conflicts going on. I might have to change the, uh, I'm probably gonna have to change the time permanently to 3 p.m. PDT. So hopefully you guys are okay with that. Hey, Pat. <laughs> you are excited here. <laughs> cool, I'm glad you're excited. Uh, yeah, hopefully you guys started your Monday well and uh, you guys started, you know, working on your art or whatever uh, assignments, projects you're working on. Today we're going to continue with the uh, kaiju concept. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to continue adding uh, details here and lighting to it. Uh, so let's get started. Just a reminder that we we're trying to avoid adding scales to it, but like I said last week, I am still going to try to add a few here uh, around where the head is and the neck. Uh, and then um, as we go down in some areas, smooth it out. Uh, but yeah, let's just try it out and we could always smooth the texture out so it's not so scaly uh, But yeah, for now, we'll just keep moving forward with this How are you guys doing you guys all had a good weekend? Again my my morning's been extremely busy uh, with all these meetings and getting my, uh, downloading all this stuff onto my new computer, uh, getting set up for the job, the new job and everything. It's always a little stressful to be honest, to be, you know, starting a new thing, but it's, you know, and within a couple days, everything should settle down. But yeah, this new company that I joined, they're super organized. It's pretty cool. Everything has a form and a dock. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, it's, once you start working for different game companies, you can notice, again, like how different uh, every company operates. Uh, so, yeah, that aspect is uh, just interesting to experience and go through in itself. Again, there are some companies that are super well organized and some that are a mess, right? <laughs> You're like surprised at how some companies are so organized. And then again, you'd be surprised at how some companies are super uh, disorganized. You're like, really? That's, this is how they work? <clears throat> but anyways what are you guys working on or let me ask you guys are you guys organized <laughs> i've seen artists that are super organized and well you know of course there's a hand or quite a bit of artists that are not as organized right i think for myself i had to learn to be organized over the years um, the, you know, work in general just forced me to become more organized. Don't get me wrong, I'm still learning. <laughs> still trying to make more improvements. Uh, yeah. Hey, what's going on, Tony? Hey, Sea of Green. It's the first time I see seeing you uh, write something here. That's cool. Uh, sea of Green says, definitely try to be organized. Makes things easier in the long run. For sure. For sure. Uh, Pat says, uh, absolutely not, although I'm working on it. <laughs> yeah, good thing that you're working on it. As long as you're working on it, that's good.
I remember in uh, art school or art college, I was in a graphic design class and you know how everyone has those art boxes, right? The art bins. I looked over at the guy next to me and I saw his art, he opened up his art bin and everything was like lined up perfectly, like well organized. It's like, it was like a, it was almost like a, a photo shoot, like of a art, like the perfect art bin, you know what I mean? And I looked at mine and I was like, what in the, this guy's like super organized. <laughs> but yeah, like I felt kind of, he made me feel bad about how my, how my art pin looked. <laughs> I felt a bit embarrassed, I guess. But anyways, yeah, we all have to learn. We learn from each other, right? And it is better to be organized. Makes things easier down the line. Hey, what's up, honey? Hey, Vika. Uh, this new company that I joined they're also uh, fully distributed which means every everybody at the company is working off-site working remotely they weren't like that before but because of you know what happened last year uh, they decided to go uh, fully distributed um, so yeah everyone's communicating through uh, through slack and all that stuff and I'm telling you guys this because things are changing for a lot of game companies. A lot of them are going remote or at least giving the option of going remote. And I think it's a good thing, you know? It's giving people more options on where they can live. You um, <laughs> through traffic, which is, you know, living in California, it's, it's horrible. Honestly, um, part of my soul died being in tra traffic for hours at a time, you know? Well, it's just not, I mean, I hate driving to begin with, so you could imagine what kind of uh, permanent damage it did to me. <laughs> I mean, you're basically wasting two hours a day sitting in the car. So yeah, it's great that uh, a lot of game companies are going remote, fully distributed, and they save a lot of money too, because those buildings that they're leasing in San Francisco or LA, I mean, they're not cheap. How many of you guys want to live, I'm sorry, how many of you guys want to work at an office though, like on site? I'm curious to know. Because, um, I could, I could understand like when you're younger or just starting off, um, it'd be fun, you know, to work on site, work next to other artists, uh, learn from each other, right?
but man after you go go through traffic like two hours a day you're like forget it i just want to be home in my pajamas drawing <laughs> the only thing I really miss about working on site is are like the free snacks and lunches. All the free like drinks you get. Man, in San Francisco at least, it's like that in LA too, but in San Francisco, the game companies up there, they're so competitive with each other. They have like awesome snacks, awesome food, lunch is like always great. Well, at least for the, most of the companies there. It's all like really good stuff. I like free food. <laughs> hey, uh, Pat says working in a company building sounds nice, but I think I like how. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pat also says I personally want to experience being on site at least once if for experience at least that and it might help with motivation and focus seeing everyone else working as well yeah i mean it is fun for i mean you know if you land a decent job like <laughs> it's fun it's fun um yeah i have really really good memories working at blizzard uh, back in the day, working on the cinematics team, it, it was very, very fun. We're all buddies, we're all just goofing around and just having fun, working hard, playing hard, learning from each other, critiquing each other's work, painting over each other's work, playing StarCraft, War, I mean uh, World of Warcraft, StarCraft 2. Diablo. During lunch, I played a lot of uh, ping pong and foosball actually too. <laughs> Sometimes hours a day. bad thing about playing foosball and uh, ping pong for hours a day at work is you get so sweaty sometimes. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, but that's the truth. It was pretty nasty. We used to have a fridge in the um, in one of the offices. We just had our own fridge and then um, after ping pong, we would have to open up the fridge door and, or the freezer door and just, you know, stand in front of the freezer for a couple minutes. Uh, what, what, where is it like a specific uh, company you guys want to work for or a specific uh, type of game 
or uh, genre style what's your dream job Nobody has a dream job? I mean, sure, like, uh, when you're just starting off, uh, for most of us at least, you, you don't want to be too picky about where you work, right? Uh, you're, just, you're just trying to land a job, right? Uh, it's funny though, some people when I talk to them, they're like some students, they sound so picky about where they want to work and in my mind I'm just thinking hmm I think you just want to land a job first right <laughs> and then uh, think about you know moving on up to wherever you want to work you know what I mean I mean it's always good to have an idea of uh, what the end goal is like where you want to end up that's fine and that's good actually have certain goals on what kind of game you want to work on, where you want to work, stuff like that. But, but you know, for most of us, again, uh, we need to start somewhere, right? Just anywhere. But again, it, it is good to uh, think about where we want to work. Uh, like, for example, like if you want to work at a mold, mobile game company or, you know, make PC games console games, what type of genre, like fantasy, sci-fi, things like that. That way sometimes that helps cater your uh, portfolio too, uh, in a more specific direction. That could help you land a job as well. I'm going to give him some webbing here. Hey, what's up, Lenny? Thanks. Glad you're able to join here. Penny says, I'd love to work for uh, Best Vesta. Is that how you pronounce it? I forget. Or ID Software. Yeah, um, 
those are two of the companies that I, I was interested in back in the day too. Uh, they make um, the role playing games, right? And uh, FPS, like first person shooter games, right? Uh, yeah. Pat says, uh, working on Devil May Cry, definitely. Reason why I'm learning concept art. Cool. Uh, Pat, then are you catering your uh, portfolio to that st particular style, the Devil May Cry style? Or are you more focused on like foundation ins at this point? Thanks for sharing, by the way, guys. Uh, Iguanodon thumb right here. Pat says he's working on a, or Pat's working on foundation first. My skills aren't up to par yet. Yeah, that's good. I mean, you can't go wrong by focusing on a foundations. It's usually most people's weakness, right? The foundations. People neglect it. We always want to do the fun stuff, huh? <laughs> uh, looks like I got to darken up some of these areas before I uh, add lighting. Like the belly area is way too uh, bright, so I'm gonna go in there and darken it a bit. Oh, by the way, I finally ordered uh, chickens or chicks. Um, some of the some of you guys know I built the chicken coop uh, several months back, and uh, finally ordered some chicks. They're like sold out everywhere. I have to wait. Let's see, I guess two weeks, but like that was the fastest I could get them. Some places they're sold out for months. I didn't know uh, chickens were that popular. Even the uh, local store around my neighborhood, they're all sold out.
anyone uh, raise chickens before? Or ducks? I want ducks too, but I'm going to start with chickens first. Oh yeah, Pat, um, Pat said, although I have ideas that I sketch out every now and then, yes, for sure, do both. Always have a sketchbook uh, where you throw out, like, uh, ideas, right? You're brainstorming different concepts, things like that, and then work on your foundations as well. Do both, for sure. You gotta develop, develop both. I've for sure seen uh, artists who have strong foundational skills, but they all they lacked a, a level of creativity right so they could render the heck out of something but when it comes to like unique ideas they they just couldn't do it for some reason so definitely do both Getting rid of that shadow, uh, it was too uh, deep right there. It might look kind of cool, but it might confuse uh, the modeler, like in terms of the shapes here, what's going on there. I always say that readability is number one. So I gotta follow my own rule here. Get rid of any uh, unnecessary shadows that are going across uh, or over the uh, the concept here. <clears throat> hey, Chris and Courtney. Just humans, huh? <laughs> Raising humans? Raising kids? recommend you guys get reference whenever you uh you're trying to figure out um you know the muscles and things like that especially if uh, you haven't rendered out too many uh too many uh, monsters like this because you do have to manipulate the muscles and things like that but here, I don't really, I don't have the time to look at reference here, because uh, I'm going to bore you guys looking for reference. <laughs> so I'm just going to wing it, but for you guys, always, always look at reference.
maybe I'll prove to you guys how how important it is here. When you see how bad it turns out, you'll be like, oh, he should have used reference. <laughs> I mean, if, if professionals are using reference right, then how could uh, students or people who are up and coming not use references, right? Uh, you have to. And I just keep repeating that because a lot of students, they don't use reference. I don't know why. They think they could wing it. Um, but, you know, sure, can you wing it to some degree? Yes, of course you can. But is it going to really look the best it could have looked? No. And that's true in my case as well. I'm just trying to dig into my brain, my li the library that I have in my head and pull that out a bit as I'm doing this. But again, when you're manipulating like, you know, just basic anatomy, uh, you know, sometimes it looks, it can look odd when you put it down and you're trying to manipulate it into a different shape or different proportions for a monster. It could look odd. Yeah, when you add scales to things or like something like a thicker texture on top of anatomy, you can hide a lot, right? You can get away with a lot of things. But once you add like, you know, there's no fur, no uh, texture on top of uh, anatomy, like how it is on the leg area, it's you can't get away with a lot of it. Like any mistakes will all show, right? Or anything that looks weird will all show up. You guys have seen pictures of those hairless cats or uh, hairless chimps. And you see all their muscles, it just looks so weird, right? It's kind of like that. You just don't, you look like a different animal even though it's just a version of a cat or chimp that's hairless.
Hey Isaiah, Isaiah asks, Team Kong or Team Godzilla? I would say Team Kong for me, just because he's more <laughs> closer to being human. <laughs> I don't know. Godzilla looks cool, I guess, but uh, yeah, I guess I would root for uh, King Kong. Pat, who says using reference is cheating? Oh, you're saying some people do, right? Yeah, you're right, you're right. It's warm, warming up quite a bit in uh, Southern California right now. It feels like it's summer. It's, uh, let me double check. It's over 80 for sure. It's right now it's like 82 degrees. back leg I'm just gonna indicate Uh, Tony's asking, do you have any tips on how to stay consistent with the style? I'm trying to draw a comic and I find it looks different on every page. I guess there, I just have obvious tips um, to stay consistent with an art style. You just have to draw that particular style over and over and over again, right? <laughs> it's obvious, but um, study it like anything, like you're studying, you know, most of us study realistic, you know, foundational art, but for you, if you are aiming for a specific art style, you just have to study it, right? Study the way they draw the eyes, the nose, the mouths, the angles, right? The three-quarter angles, the different, you know, drawing the character from different angles the expressions, all that stuff, right? You just have to practice over and over again. Um, it's not something I'm great at either. Uh, I don't like uh, drawing something more than once, <laughs> to be honest. 
Once I draw it once, I'm done. I don't ever want to draw it again. <laughs> That's why I hate drawing orthos, because I'm done. I'm already done. I want to move on to the next thing. But yeah, it's definitely not for everyone, meaning uh, drawing comics, right? I, I, I wouldn't be able to do it. I have one, one student that loves drawing the same character over and over again from different angles and different poses, things like that. So for someone like that, it would work, you know? Uh, so you, it's good to know like how you are again, being self-aware of uh, the type of uh, person or artist you are like what would work for you, what wouldn't. It's good to know all that stuff ahead of time so you don't waste time like pursuing a direction that doesn't even fit you, right? If you spent like a few, I don't know, like a couple hours just thinking about it, you can figure it out, right? I remember I tried to draw a comic uh, when I was probably in junior high school. I think that was the first time I tried to actually draw a real comic. And I quit after, uh, <laughs> after like just a few pages. <laughs> I realized just within a few hours, this wasn't for me. It all seemed cool in my head, you know what I mean? When I was thinking about the comic and what it was going to look like and all that stuff, it sounded cool in my head. But once I started doing the work, it wasn't so fun for me. I wish I could hire someone to do this. Martin, <laughs> yeah, it's Dragon Ball. <laughs> My own version of Dragon Ball. Martin joined the stream, huh? By the way, if you guys could take a moment to give me a like, I'd appreciate that. Uh, knock this back a bit. Trying to group the belt, like the uh, different parts of the uh, muscle groups together a bit better. Right here, they look very segmented. 
So I'm just trying to group them together, unify the lighting on the surface of the uh, uh, of the uh, creature here. He looks kind of skinny. I'm going to play with that later. Kind of darken up the edges here and the forms a bit before I uh, before I add some lighting. You guys do anything interesting over the weekend? Or uh, now that it's uh, warming up in a lot of places, do you guys have a uh, vacation plans? Or I don't know, things you want to do? Isn't it spring break? <laughs> Oh, Lenny says he watched Kong and Godzilla on the weekend. How was it? Honestly, I forgot that it was coming out. Was it worth watching? Was it awesome? Did you actually go to the theater? Or uh, just watch it online?
Cool, Lenny says, uh, they wiped out about 60% of hum humanity, hu human life in the movie. Pretty sweet CGI. Cool. Yeah, I want to check it out too. I'll look it up. I don't think the theaters are open around here. Or maybe... Actually, maybe I did hear that they're partially uh, opening it up. I'll probably just stay home and watch it though. I'm gonna work on the fins or whatever what do you call this spines fin spines this looks a little too high I did want it to kind of flare up more than the uh, rest of the uh, spines but it looks like it's a little too high like a alfalfa Godzilla you guys know who alfalfa is <laughs> I'm not even gonna explain where that's from if you guys don't know Hey Zane, little rascals, yep. How do you know about that, Zane? Are you are you older? <laughs> Are you old as me? <laughs> okay. That that explains it. I'd be surprised if uh, some of these younger guys kn knew where that's from. Yeah, yeah. Not at not as old as me, Zane. You still I'm a decade ahead of you, but yeah, like, you're probably one of the older ones out here. <laughs> I, I'm glad at least you know where that's from. <laughs> Pat says, uh, Pat's working on an anime fan concept art book. Cool. Maybe I don't look that old, but I feel that old sometimes. <laughs> Mentally a lot younger. Mentally. <laughs> Mentally still a teenager. <laughs> it's 
sometimes, not all the time. When I'm responsible, you know, when I have to be, I am. Don't get me wrong. But, yeah. As a concept artist, you need to know when, how to play, you know? Your mind has to go in different places, you know what I mean? You gotta stay young mentally. To some degree. That's my, that's how I justify it, by uh, staying immature. Yeah, you know, like, when I would, uh, go to buy some beer at the grocery store, I used to never get carded. Or, sorry, I would always get carded. Sorry, the opposite. I would always get carded until I hit 40, maybe? I think 41 was the first time I didn't get carded. And I was, that's when I was like, okay, now I'm looking my age. People aren't carding me anymore. Zane says, I joined the concept art game late, went into the medical field in college, now I work days, I'm getting into what I love. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's ever too late to start. I mean, you should always pursue what you enjoy doing, right? Um, you got into the medical field, cool. It's, you're helping people, you're doing stuff that's helping people, and you get to do stuff that's fun, that's awesome. To be honest, sometimes um, I wonder if I'm doing anything to help people, or that's what I used to wonder when I, before I taught art. You know, working on games is fun and all, but like after a while, you start wondering, or at least I did, I'm like, what is the point of this? Sure, it's games, it's fun, but again, after a while, you have, you go through one of those days or nights when you're wondering about life. <laughs> you, you get deep and you're like, what am I doing? And you want to, you want to do something that's beneficial to other people or helpful in some way, right? Or at least that's how I felt. So teaching art or mentoring, that that fills that that part of me a little bit. Feeling feeling like I'm helping people a little bit. It's more fulfilling at this point in my life, for sure. Uh, not sure about these fins right now. I'm just 
throwing down stuff and I'll probably adjust it later. It's not looking great right now, but again, um, I gotta start somewhere, so I'm trying it out. This is where reference would help, but again, who has time for that when you're doing a stream? I can't even show you the reference I'm using, so, or if I was, so. I'm gonna try something a little different here. Kind of exploring on top of what I'm, my own concept right now. I mean, I still feel like I'm pursuing um, what I really want to do on the side as well, you know? So again, Zane, it's never too late to start what you love to do, you know? It changes, you know, as you get older, as you experience different things, uh, what you want to do for some people changes. So you, you just adjust, you know? 